welcome you tonight to the 1994 Chris Annual Christmas Program. And could I have a round of applause for the children? You're all real nervous back there. Wonderful, they've been great, but they're a little bit frightened. Um, it always turns out great, and I, I'm just always really happy with whatever happens. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, all the people that were involved in, in doing all these wonderful things for us. Uh, PTO for providing gifts and items that you'll see tonight. Uh, Joe for his junkyard giving us our, our street, <laughs> um, and um, John for the music and our wonderful, wonderful people up here. I just couldn't do it without them. I depend so much upon the people up here that it's really, really great because I need to go back and forth and get some panics out of these kids. They're always, there's something going on. So that's kind of my role. Uh, this year is an unusual year as far as the play is concerned. Our children uh, wrote different plays and then Jennifer volunteered to put them in a play and combine them. She worked very hard at it. She's worked very hard with the children. She's provided shoes, clothes, hair, you name it, that girl has provided it. So let's give her that provided a lot and that was Sue Hyde and, and I want to give her a round of applause because she never gets recognition. <laughs> Sue always puts the final touch on things and I run to her and I said, oh, I've got to have a nail file real quick. It's ruining the play and she runs to find something. So that's Sue. That's Sue. <laughs> she, she helped with the uh, Nancy with the so did, Yes, I do. <laughs> children comfortable and those things are uh, Sue is always there for us she was here for five days helping the students go through the play uh, when I left you know I felt good well they were good but they were great when I got back and so I just really appreciate it I want to thank Bernie for helping this the children with a little um, graham cracker what do we call them gingerbread houses. My, I've got a sore throat, so I'm kind of lost and you've had a lot of attention here. You know, I, I, I can't thank uh, parents and everyone that, that provides every year just lots and lots to our community. And that's what makes it so special. And the kids, uh, they really love everybody here, and they're going through some trauma right now, and so they need your support. And I know they're going to be great. They're going to come out each individually in a few minutes, and they're going to be introduced at their characters. And so uh, we'll we'll kind of start. I hope that we can kind of get going here. I'll, okay, you want to? Yeah. Time, 
Due to the fact that the government needed children to work, a lot of the children were out on the streets. The time of the plague takes place in 1932 during the Depression. Loving is a small town in Texas that has a population of 107, and the only way to get to Loving is a dirt road or by boat because it's located in the mountains. The lovely orphans in this loving orphan, which are okay. Hope is Clay by Beverly Curry. Her parents were too young to raise a baby, and they were working full-time, so she got taken away from them when she was four years old. Hope is very sneaky. You can do a lot of things in the old <laughs> She likes to sing and pretend she's one of the girls she has heard on the radio. Okay. Myrna. He carries it everywhere he goes. And inside Myrna is all of Alexander's things. A deck of cards and anything else he can get his hands on. He grew up on the streets as a card shark. He was brought to the orphanage by the authorities when he was caught stealing from a street peddler. <laughs> she does leave, she doesn't tell anyone she's going so no one else can get into trouble. Our last orphan is Lindsay, played by Kelly Gurney. Lindsay is the oldest one in the orphanage. She has been there the longest and feels like she has authority. <laughs> her parents put her up for adoption when she was first born. She's always chewing gum and cracking it just to fit her tough image. Miss mm -hmm. Opal puts her in charge of a lot of chores like cooking dinner. And deep down, she's a real pussycat with a troubled background. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. 
was like, don't touch his nose. And he's like, why not? He's like, You'll find out if you do. So he doesn't. Oh, so he brings the polar bear home. And he's thinking, <clears throat> what would happen if I touched this polar bear's nose? Mm -hmm. But he decided not to. But about a week later, he, hit, he touched this <laughs> polar bear's nose. How stupid can you get? So this polar bear stands up on both of uh, us, gets up on his hind legs, chases him around the room, and finally he backs him up into a wall, and he go and he has his sharp claws out, and he's growling, and then he puts his um, hand down, and he goes, hey, you're it. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. There's no room. No room nowhere. Come 
me today. I want you to put on your cleanest clothes, take baths, and be on your best behavior. I'll be back in five minutes. <coughs>
further with the program. Could you give our cast a great big clap because I think they need it.
time for a Fred. Is there a Fred around here? <laughs>
<laughs> okay, <laughs> let's get into the Christmas spirit. Now that it's all over, I have to relax. John's going to sing some yeah, songs. No, and somebody who has a very good voice, would they please try to carry it? I wanted to do a string stand and they couldn't get here. All right, John, what do we have? What's another one? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, get that, go. Keep the coat. To Dan 